Vancouver and Gamma and the School of Visual Arts in New York. I really enjoyed your talk in the spring. I hope I'm looking forward to this. I'm um, actually talking about black hole. But... Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, as, as she just mentioned, I gave a talk in uh, in May at the conference. And, and how many of you were not here? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, anyway, I mean, because I'm showing all new art, but I I'm assuming that you you know some some uh, a, a few things maybe because of my themes. Okay, uh, but I'll I'll just uh, fill in. Okay. All right, so anyway, I'm going to be talking about uh, art, visual art, about black holes. And uh, and, uh, and after the first, in, 19, in the early 1970s, after the first black hole was confirmed to exist, you know, uh, Cygnus X1, uh, okay. Okay. All right, Remo Ruffini and John Wheeler co-authored this article, Introducing the Black Hole. And the editors of Physics Today commissioned a painting to go on the cover of this uh, magazine, okay? And they commissioned it from Helmut Wimmer. And Wimmer worked as an illustrator at the old, um, Hayden Planetarium at the Museum of Natural History in New York. Okay, and this is what he did. Okay, and so it's a black sphere with light going into it, and he's showing a grid that's deformed by the uh, space time. Uh, it, it's deforming the space time uh, by gravity. And what he's doing is combining a gridded globe with a, a vanishing point linear perspective, okay? And he's showing the uh, lines vanish inside the black hole at the singularity. And he also uh, uh, illustrated in the, in the lower right, uh, Cygnus X1's companion star. And uh, Ruffini described what it was like for him as a physicist to work with this artist. This is a quote from him. I explained the concept of a black hole to Helmut Wimmer. We met at the Hayden Planetarium where he was working. He listened and he went home. He could not sleep that night. He woke up at five in the morning and said to himself, I understand the way it should be. And he did the painting. He called me the day after. I went to New York and saw the painting. It was splendid. And this is another illustration for the um, essay. Okay, and the uh, co-authors approved this illustration. And they titled it, uh, A Black Hole in Action. And in a dramatic flair, they're showing various objects, furniture, flowers, television sets, uh, potatoes going into the black hole. <laughs> this is what they did. And, and they, uh, and this is how the co-authors, Rafini and Wheeler, described this illustration. Any object that falls into a black hole loses its separate identity. Okay. In, in May, I showed this sculpture of Cygnus X1 by the contemporary uh, German artist, Bajoran Dahlem. And I described Dahlem as a cynic because he, he's made this sculpture out of junk. But I was wrong. What he's doing is picking up on the physicist's joke. Okay? He's having uh, furniture lamps flying in. And this artist, Bajoran Dahlem, he's drawn 
he's done many artworks about a black hole. Uh, I'll, I'll show you another one. This is one of uh, the Sagittarius A. Okay, and this sculpture, similarly, he has uh, uh, found objects flying into it. You know, uh, furniture, a uh, bicycle, a fan, and so on. And this sculpture is enormous. It's seven meters across, or seven meters uh, across, and uh, 14 meters across and seven meters high, enormous. Sorry, what, where is it displayed? Where, where is it displayed? Where um, it, it was in, in um, a building, I, I'm not sure what building, in Dusseldorf. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this next was displayed in Berlin. Okay. <laughs> uh, he also does abstract uh, sculpture of black holes. Okay, so in this one, he, this was also very large. He also did, he did this uh, black polygon, the center representing the black hole, and then the lights going around are representing stars orbiting the black hole. And so in the late 70s, uh, Jean-Pierre Lumine did this uh, well-known uh, drawing of a black hole. Of, of the accretion disk around a black hole. And he did it in monochrome because he was showing all the electromagnetism coming off of the, of, of the black hole. And it's rotating towards us on the left. And so it's got a strong Doppler effect. And a decade later, two Japanese astronomers wondered, uh, did an image of what this looks like, would look like invisible light. Okay, and so this is what they did. So it's strongly blue shifted. And this is a contemporary artist who does uh, black holes, uh, Fabian uh, Uffner. He does black holes surrounded by these colorful accretion disks. Okay, he does many of them. Right. And what the way he makes these is he puts liquid paint on a drill bit. Then he turns the drill on and, and it, the paint flies off by centrifugal force and he photographs it with a high speed camera. OK, so this this, this is an inkjet print and this one. OK, and now I'm going to show you a, a couple examples of black holes used symbolically by artists. And what this tells me is that how popular black holes are in the public imagination and, uh, and how they have, uh, they're always associated with darkness, danger, and so on. Okay, all right. In, the, in this first example, uh, a black hole symbolizes disappearance. Okay, and it, it's by the uh, Italian uh, artist Marco Poloni, and, and his work is uh, on the left there, and it's it's a film, it's a uh, part of a film he's made on uh, Atore Marjorana. And, and Marjorana, uh, he was an Italian physicist who worked with Enrico Fermi in Rome in the 1930s. Okay, and they were at the forefront of physics, firing neutrons into uranium, but they became distracted because by the political situation, uh, because um, Mussolini was increasingly allied with uh, Adolf Hitler. And in 1938, uh, the Italian fascists put Hitler's anti-Semitic laws in place in Italy. And, uh, Fermi, who had a Jewish wife and two small children, uh, went to, took his family to Stockholm to get the Nobel Prize, and he never returned to Italy. And he went on to the United States. And Marjorana uh, withdrew all the money from his bank account, and he was last seen buying a boat ticket from Naples to Palermo. Never been seen since. So this is his black hole symbolizing disappearance on the sea. 
In this painting, uh, a black hole symbolizes danger. Uh, it's, it, it, you, we can see the black hole above. It's above these colorful clouds. And below, there's a figure entering a spacecraft. Uh, and uh, so an astronaut is a voyager among the stars. But the title of this painting is The Black Hole and a Traumonaut's Uncertain Journey. Okay, and so a traumonaut uh, is a voyager among wounds. And according to the artist, David Hoffner, who's, uh, Huffman, who's African American, the traumonaut symbolizes uh, an African who was uh, taken as slaves from, uh, from their homeland and sent on an uncertain journey in a dangerous universe, always looking for home. Uh, and this is an example, the, uh, the black hole symbolizes uh, dark political forces. And the artist, Don Bull, he's Vietnamese born Danish. Uh, and he was, so he was born in 1975 during the fall of Saigon, okay, after which uh, many South Vietnamese were sent to prison camps where they were tortured and uh, murdered. And Vo's father uh, started building that, started building by hand in secret a boat. And when Vo was four years old, he put his father put the family in a boat. And at night, they launched on the treacherous South China Sea. And they were picked up by a Danish war, uh, merchant ship and granted asylum in Denmark. And so that's where the artist grew up. Okay, And he titles this Massive uh, Black Hole in the Dark Heart of the Milky Way. So what are we looking at? Uh, so uh, above, so this is an installation. So there are uh, American flags, and there uh, across from them, there are shopping bags like a tourist would get if they went to Ellis Island to see the Statue of Liberty. And both of those are done in gold leaf. Okay, and then the other, the text panels, are quotes from. The Grimm's uh, Brothers fairy tale, uh, Cinderella, done in, uh, they're in German, in old Gothic script, and they were hand lettered by Vo's father, who's an expert in uh, calligraphy. Okay, so what does all this have to do with astronomy? Okay, he's, Vo is making an analogy between the Milky Way and the United States. And as he tells you in the title, they both have dark hearts. The Milky Way has a black hole in the center that devours anything in its vicinity. And the United States had dark political powers that uh, caused it to enter the uh, war in Vietnam. Okay, so this is uh, a large mural. in Silicon uh, Valley, uh, California. And it has a black hole in the center with light going into it. And um, the artist who's, sh she's shown standing there on the right. Uh, she's making, one of the themes of her mural is uh, she's making an analogy between the light that uh, scientists use to uh, discover black holes with uh, the scientific illumination that they find uh, truths of the universe and so on. And the mural is dedicated to women in science. And so there are three women, they're holding hands, forming a circle around the black hole. And it's dedicated to a particular woman in science, uh, Chao Pei Ma, 
uh, who she was on the faculty at UC Berkeley, and she's she's an astrophysicist who studies black holes. Okay, this artist, he's symbolizing the warpature of space time around a black hole uh, with these uh, circular sheets of plastic. He's bent them. And in the center of this sculpture, he, um, he locates a, a speaker. This is what it looks like from the side. Okay, so it's got um, a cone shape. At the end of the cone is a light, and it, it's symbolizing uh, a singularity. And the speaker at the center of the sculpture, it broadcasts um, <clears throat> gravitational waves from legal uh, that are translated into sound that uh, humans can hear. Shay Hembry, he was born and raised in rural Arkansas on a farm, and all of his artwork is agricultural byproducts, like uh, hay and rooster feathers. And uh, in his youth, he studied birds and he considered becoming an ornithologist before he became an artist. And he's, he did, this is from a series he did called Nest Work. Okay. And he did it in a, in a uh, gallery and he filled the whole gallery waist high with dried grass. And then he made a circle in the, in the center, a deep hole and according to the artist, it can symbolize a bird's nest, uh, a spiral galaxy, or a black hole with its accretion disk. And this is the same artist, Shea Hembert. And, and so this is uh, your piece of wood, uh, among twine. This is a detail of it. Okay, so he's burned the center of the wood. Okay, it's a literal hole. And according to the artist, this symbolizes a star that's collapsed into a black hole and the uh, ash edge symbolizes the uh, event horizon. And in May, Ramesh asked me if, <laughs> if, if, if there are any, art, any artists that uh, have done artwork about binary black holes. Okay, since there's a, so much study that I like in the science diagram, and I couldn't think of one. I should have thought of him. The artist was in the audience. Oh, yeah. look at yeah. And you, uh, and, and the, the, the artist, um, Eric Keller, uh, he's imagined uh, in, in this artwork what, what a black hole would look, what, what pattern they would make when they merged. And, and many of you may know Eric or Rick, as he's known, uh, because his day job is on the physics faculty at Harvard. But he's got a whole reputation in the art world. That's where I know him from. Direct collapse black holes uh, are probably, like this quasar, they're probably formed like large uh, whirlpools. And this photographer has done this photograph of a black hole and he's managed to uh, photograph uh, a whirlpool of water around it. Now, some of the most interesting work uh, today uh, about black holes is done by uh, Asian artists uh, because these Eastern outlooks have themes that resonate with the science of black holes. Primordial energy, nothingness, emptiness, darkness, void, silence, mystery. So I talked about this a lot. And you know, those of you who weren't here in May, anyway, you'll have to bear with me. Um, so I, I talked about this quite a bit. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna show you to uh, today two uh, uh, quotes from two of the of, of these philosophers, theologians from these Eastern outlooks that are representative. Okay. So this is uh, Shang-Chi. He 
he was the major writer for ancient Taoism. He's a contemporary of Plato. This is a quote from him. Hold on to all that you have received from heaven, but do not think you've gotten anything. Be empty, that is all. The perfect man uses his mind like a mirror, going after nothing, welcoming nothing, like a mirror, responding, but not storing. Nishida Kataro, early 20th century, philosopher of Zen Buddhism, is a quote from him. Does there not lie hidden at the base of our Eastern culture, preserved and passed down for, by our ancestors for several thousand years, something which sees the form of the formless and hears the voice of the voiceless? In other words, the form of the void and the voice of silence. This artist, Yambi Tan, she's American of Chinese descent, and she's a practicing Buddhist. Okay, she's done this installation. Okay. She calls it Cosmic Garden. It's like a Zen dry garden. This is a quote from her. Black holes are a reoccurring theme in my artwork. Beyond my interest in theoretical <laughs> physics, I see connections to the Buddhist philosophical concept of the void, emptiness, nothingness. Rather than signifying an absence of something, emptiness is a space of infinite potentiality. It's during the practice of seated, silent Zen meditation that I most feel an embodied sense of the emptying of oneself into pure being. And we're now going to see uh, her some sculpture. I'm going to show you this object. Okay, she calls it wormhole bell. And it's a bell that's got attached to it our microphones, that it, it feedback microphone. Okay, and so when you ring it, it self-resonates. This is how she describes a wormhole. Black holes and their speculative double-ended form of the wormhole are a symbol of transformation. Physically, traveling into a black hole is almost certainly um, a obliteration and a return to pure atomic matter. However, a wormhole is an unknown space of no return, a portal to another side of reality. And in April 2019, when the Event Horizon Telescope uh, released their image of um, M87 star, she was at a Buddhist monastery in France. And she made these bells, this one and this one. I'll show you now a close up of them. She made them in celebration. She calls them. And many seven star bells. Where were they displayed? Where was this piece displayed? In the US or outside? Uh, you know, I don't remember where where it where it is. Uh, I think it was in England. I, I could look it up. I, I you know I'm just curious. Yeah. It's still yeah. up or it was I, that, no it, no, it's not still up. It was commissioned. Uh, by uh, an English establishment. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember the name. This is uh, Kai Gosheng. He was born and raised in China. Uh, and uh, in his early 20s, he started experimenting with gunpowder as an artistic media. If you explode a little gunpowder on paper, it leaves a mark as you're seeing in these gunpowder drawings. And in, in his late 20s, he, uh, he went to uh, live in Japan. And there he started reading books on astrophysics, like he read Cosmos by Carl Sagan. 
and a brief history of time by uh, Stephen Hawking, um, and in, in translation, of course. Uh, and he and this is how he described his experience of that. When I came to Japan, my encounters with the theories of 20th century astrophysics were very significant to me. The concepts of the Big Bang, black holes, birth of stars, what's beyond the uh, universe, wormholes, these ideas were not commonly known uh, in China at the time. They were an eye-opener for me. At the same time, many of these ideas are similar to traditional Chinese views of metaphysics and the universe with which I was familiar. Okay, and he calls this gunpowder. And it, 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 uh, it, and a, after he uh, was in Japan, he made these gunpowder drawings into ch traditional Chinese screens. Okay, and he calls it the vague border at the end of time space, space time. And then he went on to do a whole series of these gunpowder drawings transformed into uh, screens. Uh, and he calls them, he calls the series Primeval Fireball because the series, the, his drawings, like the universe, exploded into existence. Okay, and in this explosion event, he, uh, he, made, he made an analogy between the power of a black hole and the power of nuclear energy as seen in the atomic bomb. Okay, he, he titles this work, The Earth Has Its Black Hole Too. And this is how he describes it. This explosion project was realized at Hiroshima Central Park, the target of the atomic bomb. I dug a deep hole in the ground at the center of the park, and then I used 114 helium balloons at various heights to hold aloft 2,000 meters of fuse and three kilograms of gunpowder. The ignition kicked off then from the highest and outermost point to the spiral burning inward and downward in concentric circles and disappearing in the black hole in the center of the park. My intention was to suggest that in harnessing nuclear energy, humanity had ge has generated its own black hole in the earth that mirrors those in space. In the 90s, Kai moved permanently to New York where he did this explosion event. Okay. Uh, it's uh, for, for over the East River. Uh, he titles it uh, tra Transient Rainbow. This is what it looked like. So uh, Takashi Yurakami, a Japanese artist, he, uh, he he did this. He's as a as a parody of uh, Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse, and it also reflects colorful characters in Japanese pop culture. Uh, and as he calls it, Tantan Bowl, that's a title of the piece. And um, as such, it's the artist's alter ego. So Tantan Bo figures in a lot of the artist's artwork. Okay. This is Tantan Bo Black Hole. Okay. And, 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 and like the previous artist, like Kai, 
uh, he's making an analogy between uh, the power of a black hole and nuclear energy. Okay, and you you can see it in the this is a very large painting at seven meters across, and uh, the, I'm showing you the in this detail I'm showing the the panel on the right, and you can see at the top of the panel there's a symbol of an atom, and at the bottom of it is a black hole. And the painting was first exhibited at the University of Chicago, where Fermi led the uh, Manhattan Project to develop the atomic bomb. Okay. And uh, the, the, what he's doing in the pen is uh, uh, like the victims of Hiroshima that had their internal organs liquefied, Tan Tan Bo has uh, biological forms dripping from his mouth and squirting out of his ears. This is a poster for uh, a Jap Japanese uh, pop culture, a manga, and the heroine is shown uh, in the upper right. She's uh, a young schoolgirl, and the 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 manga, uh, the comic book, it, it features a black hole. And uh, Miroku is a, a Japanese monk in the manga, and <clears throat> his grandfather was cursed with a hole in his hand. And uh, it's a wind tunnel, it's called. And it, it sucks in and it can suck in the hand and the whole person after a while, it gets stronger. And all his male descendants are, uh, uh, they have the same curse. And Maruko transfers it from being a curse to being a weapon. Here he's showing you his wind tunnel. Okay. And in, 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 in the uh, manga, the, an artist is doing screen paintings of various monsters and they come alive and they attack Roku. Okay. And so on the uh, left there, he's saying, I must unleash the wind tunnel and he's showing it to you below. And then he, and then in the center, he sucks all of the uh, monsters into his wind tunnel. And that, that you're seeing the artist below. And on the right, uh, the heroine says, this isn't your everyday Buddhist monk. It's the black hole. This is Team Lab. Uh, they're an art collective that's centered in, that's located, they're centered in Tokyo. And they do installations. And this installation is uh, composed of lamps that are on tracks at various heights. And when a viewer approaches one of the lamps, they change colors. They speed up, slow down, stop. and the title of the piece is microcosm, okay? Because it's a microcosm. And all the surf surfaces in this installation are mirrored. Floor, ceiling, you know, all the walls. And so they reflect, uh, these lamps are reflected to infinity. It has sound with it. This is Team Lab's piece on a black hole, okay? And so they title it Soft Black Hole because the viewer enters the space and walks on foam that's covered with black fabric and they sink in, okay? The subtitle is Your Body Becomes a Space That Influences Another Body, okay? Because, you know, the... the uh, they're making an analogy between the viewer who the viewer is the black hole and they're they're distorting space time as they walk on it and it distor distorts the space time of anything near it this 
this is their um, sculpture of, of, of black holes, same group, team lab. And it's made of light. It also has sound. And the viewer, you can see a silhouette of a viewer on this side. And, and the, the viewer is looking at all this light and the, the lights form eventually a wormhole, a hole. Okay. And the viewer is invited then to travel through the hole in their imagination to what's on the other side of a wormhole, the unknowable other side. Okay, so these are the themes, and again, those of you who uh, didn't hear me in May, you're going to have to accept my, uh, uh, you're going to have to believe me that these, these themes are deeply, deeply rooted in Eastern thought. They're also, some of these themes are also rooted in modernism, okay, especially darkness, void, silence. And so I'm going to show you some examples of modernism as its form. And then I'm going to show you um, <clears throat> examples of contemporary artists in a modernist tradition that have done art about black holes. Okay, so uh, this is by August Sandel. <clears throat> he was a designer in Munich in the late 19th century. And he designed this facade. So he designed it in stucco. Okay. So, uh, you know, what is it? Is it a wave? Is it a dragon? He tells us what it is. We are at the beginning of a totally new art, abstract art. <clears throat> uh, an art with forms which mean nothing and remind one of nothing and represent nothing. Early 20th century uh, Russian artist <clears throat> Kasper Malevich, uh, he did uh, uh, abstract compositions with geometric forms, and he describes what it was like to paint one of these uh, in Moscow in the early 20th century. He said it was like disappearing into a void. This is a quote from him. I saw myself in space, hidden among the points and colored strips, and there in the middle of them, I depart in the abyss. And after the horrors of World War II, these themes take on a more nihilist, uh, these themes take on a more nihilist edge. So Theodore Adorno, who's a German Jew who spent the war in exile in New York. And after uh, 1945, he returned to Germany and wrote this. Radical art today is the same as dark art. Its background color is black, like this uh, painting by uh, Mark Rothko. Now I'm going to show you modern and artists who are in in, in, the, in a modernist tradition who've done art about black holes. Okay, Lee Bontecu, she began her career in the 50s and 60s when uh, black holes were only known in the science community. She didn't know about them. And this is a, a relief sculpture she, she did. She's uh, stretched canvas, so it's three-dimensional. And in the center of all of her sculpture, she uh, puts a hole that's, um, <clears throat> and she lined the hole with black velvet so it didn't ref uh, reflect any light. And in the late 60s, when the term black hole uh, became known or was invented, um, she adopted it. She said, great, I've been making black holes for uh, decades. So if you like it, and then in her later work, the uh, astronomical references are clear, like in this piece. It's a very large 
It's like a galaxy. Okay, this is what it looks like in MoMA. So it's very large. Uh, it, um, and it's got a black hole at its center. <coughs> Frederick Eversley, he was trained in engineering in the 60s, and he worked as an engineer for at NASA designing acoustical equipment. And, um, and then in the, around 1970, he transitioned to being an, an artist doing sculpture like this in castor resin. And uh, in, in the early 70s, in 71, when Cygnus X1 was confirmed to be a black hole, he was in a, he had enough background in science to uh, appreciate it. And he did these sculptures. This is only three years after Cygnus X1. This is 1974. Wow. This is a quote from him. He wrote this in the 70s. Black holes, white dwarfs, and neutron stars. These sculptures these are a literal representation of these phenomena. Okay, now we're going in into an exhibition. Uh, this, uh, and we're, we're, we're looking at, uh, we're heading for the piece on the left. It's of a black hole. Okay, it's, it's opaque panels on the outside and we're invited to enter it. So we go inside and the interior is uh, flexible mirrors, okay? They distort, distort this time, this space time, okay? And so wherever we look, the space is distorted. It's inescapable. James Rosenquist, he's best known as a pop artist, but he did this large monochrome painting of a black hole. So the black hole is in the center and on either side uh, is collages of uh, disconnected objects. So Olafar Eliasson, <clears throat> this, the sculpture is, is about this big uh, and he's made it of iris diaphragms. They're, they're, they're things you can twist, make them make the hole larger and smaller. And so the viewer, can touch them and uh, control the amount of light, okay? Or turn it off and be, it becomes just a black sphere or a dark star as he titles the piece, okay? It's the 18th century original name of a black hole. Okay, so this is another art collective. They're like Team Lab. This one is, is located in, um, uh, in London. And, uh, and so they do these uh, installations you walk into. And uh, th th this one, it's called Distortions in Space Time. And it's on a black hole. So you're invited to come. So this, uh, this is a still. This is another still. You can see it the uh, black hole in front of us. This is what it looks like. And so in conclusion, we've seen that black holes have inspired many artists around the world to make beautiful and sometimes profound works of art. Thank you. All right, we can take questions. Thank you so much for this. Uh, what a lovely visual journey. I was curious, uh, in your opinion, what particular, is it the aspect of light not being able to leave a black hole? Is that what is the most attractive to artists? What do they find enigmatic? Uh, I, I think just uh, th they're being inescapable. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, 
they're mysterious. They're at the end of space and time. No, they're the uh, so uh, sort of the singularity yes. part of it as well. It's yeah, like, they, they're just. They, they, you don't find art about neutron stars. For that one resin piece, they well, yeah, yeah, I mean there are a few. I mean, I, but I would be be hard pressed to think of it. And uh, and there are there's so much art about black holes. Uh, and there's some yeah. about the sun as well because of the light. So you know, I wonder therefore whether it was the aspect of. Uh, not getting any information, light or whatever. Yeah, or it's what the just, it's just the mystery of it all, right? And and that it's uh, and and there, if, if you look at well, of course you guys, you know, it's it's science videos. Uh, it always, you know, there's always music in the background, you know, but it's like woo woo music, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and and uh, it uh, and it, it it describes. Uh, and, and they they describe it in a way that's captivating. Right. You know, if you look at in, in, in any popular, um, you know, black holes one hundred and one by National Geographic or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, they, it, it, uh, yeah, I think it, I guess uh, I, I, yeah, thank you. Yeah, actually, yeah, just before we proceed on Priya's point, you know. Scientists think black holes are mysterious. Mm -hmm. And we say that all the time because we don't really understand mm -hmm. what goes on inside. Is that what the artists are reflecting or to them does it already look mysterious? I, I, I think it already looks mysterious. Yeah, just because it's black? Well, I think it's the it point of no returns. Yes. That, but that you know, doesn't come through in any of it. Yeah, yeah, uh, but I think that's what catches them to okay. try to visualize it somehow. You know, I learned about the manga from you. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, I, it's your favorite, favorite manga. manga. Right now, my favorite <laughs> manga. Yeah, I yeah. didn't want my colleagues to know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an outlet of the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Remes, did you have another follow-up? No, 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 no. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So there was a question there. Oh, 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 go ahead. I think we're at a first to Oh, or, um, okay. so you mentioned a lot of art for black holes in the art community. Mm -hmm. And as scientists, we always um look at it uh and are you know have our judgments of that not being the true scientific reflection of what it is. Mm -hmm. Now, since um, we have other art uh, like this one here that comes from the I've physicists, uh, okay. and there has been a lot of interest uh, from like scientists producing art, mm -hmm. I had a question, does the art world have an opinion of what we produce as black hole art from, <laughs> you know, our side? Well, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I I have an opinion. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about that. Uh, uh, the you know, I look at a lot of images of of that that scientists have made of black holes, mm -hmm. and uh, well, I, I mean, I'm looking at them as science image, not like that, right? You know, or not like Rick Heller makes. Mm -hmm. uh, but but as science doc, uh, as science images, like like Jean Pierre Luminet's mm -hmm. uh, image, I mean they're real interesting. Uh, you know I know, you know I I, I, uh, I know uh, as far as is far is that answer your question? I mean uh, I I was thinking that. You know, it seems we are interested in looking at art coming from artists of representing uh -huh. that, but it seems that, uh, you know, we are more pragmatic in what we want to sort of represent. This looks a lot more abstract. 
Uh, so because I think as scientists, we, we're trying to do something explanatory. Exactly. Yes. Whereas art is not confined. Artists are not confined by wanting to explain something. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I I can uh, in in May I showed an example of of an art piece that's d directly from uh, uh, an accretion disk. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the artist had, had just made an installation and projected the accretion disk on the floor right. and so on. Uh, uh, and, and so artists are real interested. And in, I mean, they find them colorful. Uh, and and uh, yeah, and uh, you know, certainly these artists, Certain Bajoran Dalem, that that artist that did the junk sculpture, uh, he, I mean, he he looks at all this stuff, of course, all these science images. I'm I'm sure he's real interested, and I'm sure he before he did that that uh, sculpture that that was remember the black polygon in the center, and and did those uh, lights around. I'm sure he looked he look to see that they were in elliptical orbits because they're in ellipses. Uh, you know, I haven't asked him, but I'm sure he would. Well, he, I, I looked him up and he lives in Potsdam. That's where the Max Planck Institute for the Albert Einstein yes. Institute is. Yeah, yeah he so, teaches here. Yeah, uh, yeah so I, I yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, Chef disappeared. But any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. I have a question. Yeah, so I was very interested to see how many um, kind of pieces of art you were able to find that had black holes and had to do with the atomic bomb and atomic energy. So I was wondering um, what your opinion is, because these kind of concepts kind of grew together in the history of physics, uh, right? Black holes were a very important kind of mathematical concept that was explored around the same time as the war and the atomic bomb development and whether in your opinion, do you think they were using the black hole as kind of a destructive metaphor to talk to the scientists, like that the artists were using a scientific concept that was of interest at that time to kind of mirror back the message of the destruction of the atomic energy to the scientists themselves? I don't think they're doing anything as complicated as you're thinking. <laughs> and, and notice both of those that both of the examples I showed are in Japan. Okay, where and where they would make that like. Yeah. You know, Shep asked me, I'm sorry, I, I, if there were any, any artwork about <clears throat> black holes, uh, I mean, uh, about the um, M87 star, that image that, that he released. And, um, I couldn't think of any, but I, that those bells, right, I'm, he, he, I'm sure he saw those, the, the M87 bells. And I, I saw something else that I, I brought it, but anyway, he's, I'll, I'll show him later if he just mm -hmm. see if it turns out. Okay. Beautiful talk. So most of the thematics in this couple of slides that you showed are like negative, you know, like silence, uh, you know, emptiness, <laughs> void. I was wondering from the artistic side, uh, black holes are also depicted sometimes as like positive things because for astronomers, you know, they're, <laughs> they're not too bad. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know they, they form stars, you know, they can form well, stars. What about, what about that, uh, that mural with the uh, analogy between uh, black holes of the illumination, I mean, you know, light going into the black hole and scientific illumination. I mean, there's a positive. Yeah. <laughs> but also these themes are not negatives in yeah. the Asian you yeah. know, Eastern philosophies. These what? are like very powerful, very yeah. positive. Mm -hmm. And they're very profound, deep concepts. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. I think yeah. the Western imagination has yeah. specific associations. Yeah. Okay, any final questions? Okay, then join me in thanking Professor.